Okay, hello everyone. This is uh, the second video in the series on adding for methods for adding hard drives and disks to Linux. I'm using Linux Mint 20.1 and this is VMware Workstation. Uh, first thing you do is you would add a hard drive to the VM. Um, you added a 15 gigabyte uh, disk simulation here. Also, if you, uh, you know, go to this, which is where I went in from my uh, method one, added it from this direction. So right here, if you look at the, it sees the disk is seen by the system. It's not formatted, and this is the device the name is Dev SDB, and it's 16 gigs. And we're doing this through the command line. Now, what this is actually doing is this is actually modifying the FS tab file because you're actually wanting to put this in a permanent position. You can actually mount files or hard drives temporarily kind of like your USB drive so this, this will work with USB in the environment so once you added the drive the next step would be to create a mount point so I would normally you can put it anywhere you want I tend to put it in my home directory under my documents you know call this drive one and then right here and this is the, the path also, I want to show you, I'm going to create a folder called A. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is because when we mount it, this folder A is going to be going away, pretty much lost. <coughs> it's going to be pretty much lost uh, to everyone. <coughs> you know, so I'm just going to show, so just be careful. So if you're going to mount, put a mount point, make sure there's something in there. If you want or need because it's going to be basically gone. Uh, so the next thing to do would be to check and verify if the Linux system uh, has, if you can see it. So now that what you do here is, so this is the command line, let me increase the view times on this thing so you can see this a little bit better so you use the sudo command because most of the commands are going to be running as root f disk minus l for list put in the correct password and here's the original drive and then here's the 15 gig sdb Sounds good, but now for all practical purposes, you can use these as the device numbers or the UUID. The reason why you want to use the UUID over these is because <coughs> these basically kind of like similar to how the Windows drives A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, R. So basically, Windows just assigns the next drive letter that's available. So if you have no control, so obviously if you move these disks from uh, one disk to another, you, you know, and you use the same nomenclature that that drive may be uh, uh, used. But when you format something, it will have uh, a special UUID number. So you will use, to get the UUID, you use the sudo block ID and right here so the SDAs are there and here are the UIDs and the types and you know and additional information so but you don't see the SDB and the reason for that is because this only sees the you know uh, the UID of drives that have been formatted and then those are given UUID identification 
identifier. So if they're formatted, they'll have a UUID identification number. So the next step would be to actually format the drive. So again, you would need to use the sudo because this needs to be done as the root user. And then you got the make file system and then a dot in the file system type xt4. And you can use xt3, ext2, ntfs, and etc. etc. There's other file systems too. ButterFS and stuff like that. VDAT and a few other things. Uh, and a few other items. <coughs> and then the mount point dev slash sdb. Click that and it created this and as you can see here is the UUID number. And they can either copy this or what I like to do is copy it from the, the block ID. So now if you go back to the block ID, right here you see there's a UUID number here which happens to be the same as this one. So I usually copy this right here for the block ID and copy. Now, let me clear the screen here real quick. And now we're going to go into editing the FS tab file. So again, you need to do this as the root user. You need to pick a, a text editor. I'm using Nano. That's common in Linux Mint. And then the file is etsy slash fs tab. And it will open up in this. I'm going to expand the screen a little bit so everyone can read it a little bit better. And then from here, here's the cursor up here. I'm going to hit the down arrow and go all the way down to the very end. And as you can see, Here's the UID number, UID number, and the, uh, the mount point, the file system, and some default, you know, and the options. <coughs> I'm going to use defaults, but right here, this is where I would just copy in the UID. Now, if you notice, there's no parentheses around there, so you're going to have to remove those parentheses. If you don't, when you reboot the system there's going to be an error and you won't be able to uh, it won't boot afterwards it'll stop and hang so right here this is the file system and then the next point is the mount point and so again we go back to right here so this is where I want to mount the drive paste that in there hit the tab button again, type ext4 or whatever file system type you want to put in there. And then I use defaults a lot most of the time. There, you know, so this is an FS tab tutorial, so I'm not going to go into that, but that's a good solid value. And then you got the next two values, which is a dump and pass. Uh, and this is, you know, I mean, again, not an FS tab, <coughs> a tutorial. I uh, use zero, one, or two. I'm using zero. And then the next one is zero, one, or two. Just kind of like a priority, just to give you. I, I use two. And now you save the file. Save, then type in yes write it and it writes next thing I do is like the cat make sure to verify that everything seems to be right correct UUID drive ext default zero <coughs> two all looks correct and now it, you normally would either reboot the system or you can mount it manually you know, or you can mount it via the FS tab. So basically what you would do, uh, 
I'm not going to show you how to do mount regular mount for temporary boot. So if you reboot the system, it will should mount the system. But it's kind of like dangerous by just rebooting it because there's a problem with the FS tab. Uh, you would have to like uh, you know recover the file that way. So the the safest way to do it is kind of like mount it here so you can uh, and you need to use the sudo command to mount dash a. So it goes to the FS tab, it mounts everything that's in the FS tab so it becomes available. And so now Let's see. So, oh, it looks like the 16 volume drive got here. So that's something new, and and we lost lost whatever was there. Now, here's the interesting thing: is because we're doing this as root, we won't have permissions to the folder. So the next step will be to you need to sudo again, change ownership to the user so my particular is on the test the user then a colon then the group which happens to be I'm going to use LM test 2 and then the path and now reset now we'll be able to create a folder And that's pretty much it. And let's verify a few things. Uh, number one, let's go back to here. So now you can do the sudo bo uh, block ID. And it looks like uh, it's there still. And everything is available. And then the next thing to check the disk drive looks like it's done UUID mount point looks like it's accessible and at this point in time you know you can reboot the system and you have your drive it's all completely uh, available for everyone and uh, pretty much it.